Hi, Jeremy Cordo in the Court of Public Opinion. I'm just on air here to let you know that we'll be live streaming the Court of Public Opinion every Friday between 9 o'clock and 12 on jeremycordo.com. Please join us. We'd love to have you. Hello everybody, welcome to this Talking Tendons podcast. My name is Peter Maliaris. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about a um, paper that I am really proud of. It is one, uh, well I, I guess I should say I'm more proud of my PhD student, Amman Mirza, who's completed it. She has worked um, really hard in difficult circumstances over the last um, uh, uh, few years completing her PhD and she's um, almost at the point of uh, uh, submitting her PhD uh, and she's been really interested in looking at um, some of the tissue properties of the Achilles tendon uh, and uh, this is one of those studies. This this study uh, was published recently in the Journal of Experimental Biology. Uh, the co-authors are um, Aman, his first author, Stephen Pearson from the UK, Glenn Lichtwark and myself. So um, uh, the title of the paper is The Acute Effects of Higher Versus Lower Load Duration Intensity on the Morphological and the Mechanical Properties of the Healthy Achilles Tendon. And it's a randomized crossover trial. So um, first of all, let's um, talk about the rationale for this study. So um, uh, when we're thinking about the morphological properties, we're thinking about the size of the tendon, so cross-sectional area and volume. When we're thinking about the mechanical properties, generally we're talking about stiffness and modulus, uh, those types of properties. So stiffness being the resistance to um, uh, uh, length changes for a given force. So the, the, the rationale for this study really um, was born out of this idea that um, there are um, fluid shifts that occur within the tendon when it's loaded uh, because it's a poroelastic tissue and that basically means that you've got a fluid phase um, you've got fluid water basically bound by proteoglycans in the tendon and you've also got lots of collagen and uh, that's the solid phase so you've got solid components of the tendon and then you've got fluid components and they interact uh, and part of that interaction it explains the viscoelastic properties um, so things like creep and stress relaxation, <clears throat> but also load dependency of stiffness. So the faster you load a tendon, the stiffer it is. Um, and they also, um, uh, some of the properties um, uh, are, are also, I guess you could also say it's a, it's a poroelastic tissue, which means that um, uh, basically the fluid is uh, mobile within the tendon and you can have fluid shifts within the tendon moving to different parts of the tendon you can also have fluid moving outside of the tendon um, and when that happens you probably they probably explain some of these um, uh, viscoelastic properties so we we're, were interested in understanding a little bit more about um, about how shifts in the fluid uh, might occur with different types of loading um, and the reason that's of interest is because we still don't really understand the mechanisms for tendon adaptation. We know that heavy load probably leads to tendon adaptation in terms of increased stiffness more than um, less heavy or less intense loads. Uh, but we don't know why. One of the potential reasons is um, related to fluid shifts. So with heavier load, um, especially when it's sustained and it's slow, uh, you may get... Um, on, on a chemical, biochemical level, changes in the interaction between the fluid and solid phase, which allows some of the water to move, and it might move uh, in terms of redistribution in that tendon, or it might flow out of the tendon. Um, so we think that this happens more with slower loading and sustained load, and probably also happens more with mechanically heavy load, um, or higher intensity loading. So that's exactly what we wanted to test. Um, and the reason we wanted to test this is because um, if you have more fluid shifts, you're going to have more shear forces. Um, you're also potentially then going to have 
um, a reduction in stiffness, which means that you're going to load uh, the cells more, ultimately, for a given force, and um, uh, you're going to lead to greater adaptations in the long term. So, so this is what we're really interested in. Um, so in this crossover trial, uh, Aman recruited um, a number of patients. I think it was um, 16 healthy participants, 12 males and f four females. And she uh, put them through uh, three um, um, interventions. And then pre and post each of those interventions, she looked at the tendon volume as well as tendon stiffness. Um, and it's a really quite an involved process. Um, I definitely recommend read the paper and it describes the methods, but in effect it's 3D ultrasound where you use an algorithm and you're tracking the ultrasound probe with 3D motion to then be able to reproduce in 3D the um, Achilles tendon volume. And um, uh, you do that pre and post, um, you do that pre and post the interventions, the loading interventions, <coughs> and uh, you, we also uh, measured stiffness. So stiffness was measured um, again with ultrasound, looking at um, uh, strain of the tendon under certain isometric loads. Um, uh, and uh, we did this with not the traditional technique where uh, people track the muscle tendon junction um, whilst uh, performing isometric loading, but we did this with a technique where we did a sweep um, basically a video of the tendon to measure length of the whole tendon whilst they sustained an isometric contraction for 15 to 20 seconds. Uh, there are advantages to this technique because one of the limitations of tracking muscle tendon junction is you can't be sure that you're always tracking the same point and there's error uh, related to that. Um, so table one in, in Aman's paper shows the time to peak which was um, the same, one second time to peak, uh, but the uh, MVC was different, 75% in two groups and 35% in, a, in um, the low intensity group. And then of the two groups that did 75% MVC, one had an eight second contraction time and the other one had a two second contraction time. So what we were modulating is contraction time and intensity. Um, so uh, what we found um, so again, it was a crossover trial, so every person did each of the interventions, and there was enough time for washout of any change in volume. So we were really interested in acute changes in, in volume, um, and if we, uh, in, in volume and stiffness, um, and, um, and this is the first step. The next step is going to be looking at uh, prospective. So uh, the idea was to get the group that um, produces the most mechanical fluid shift, um, based on volume measures, and then um, follow, and then implement that over um, a prospective trial to see whether that impacts um, um, on adaptation, which is the plan. Uh, now, so what did we find? What did Aman find? Well, we found that um, the intervention with the highest mechanical uh, loading, i.e., the one with the eight-second contraction time for 75% MVC. Um, led to the greatest reduction in free tendon volume, okay? Free Achilles tendon volume. So we measured the Achilles tendon volume um, and uh, the volume reduced substantially in that group, more so than in the other two groups. We also had a reduction in stiffness, more so in that group than the other two groups. So, um, so predictably, we saw reductions in stiffness because uh, the fluid goes out of the tendon and we also saw reductions in volume, um, so fluid going out of the tendon. Uh, so these could be, if you do this repeatedly over a number of weeks, you're probably going to see um, uh, what we think you're going to see is more adaptation related to those changes, mechanical changes in the tendon. So really interesting, a starting point for uh, going on uh, to then test this um, hypothesis that we have that these changes might be associated with um, um, with adaptation. So, um, so interesting to see um, to see this, and uh, as I say, really, really happy to see this uh, this paper come out in the Journal of Experimental Biology for uh, for for Aman and Aman's PhD. So, really, really nice um, paper. If you want to get your head around some biomechanics of the tendon. 
um, an adaptation of the tendon that's probably one to put on your reading list um, and there's lots of nice diagrams and um, uh, and explanations of all the stuff probably uh, Amand does a better job in explaining it than, than what I do so please read the paper as well I will link it to this podcast um, I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time Hi, Jeremy Cordo in the Court of Public Opinion. I'm just on air here to let you know that we'll be live streaming the Court of Public Opinion every Friday between 9 o'clock and 12 on jeremycordo.com. Please join us. We'd love to have you.